Hello, friends. The time was the late 1950s, and rock and roll was just beginning to electrify the airwaves. Pat Boone was topping the charts with a popularity even greater than Elvis. But this was just the beginning of an incredibly prolific and expansive career for Pat. From music, books, film, and television, he's done it all. He's topped the charts over 41 times, starred in 13 box office hits, released two gold albums, and sold over 45 million records. Despite his massive success, though, Pat has managed to stay grounded to the important things, God and family. He and his late wife, Shirley Boone, raised their four daughters together, and now that family extends to their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Pat is an artist, humanitarian, and an inspirational human being, and we're so honored to have him here with us today on Inside Voice. Stay tuned. Welcome to Inside Voice. My guest today is none other than the legendary Pat Boone. And Pat, I am so honored that you're here, my friend. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> well, I'm glad <laughs> to join you. And I, that legend, that, that, that title legend usually uh, as applied to people like Paul Bunyan and Jeffrey <laughs> Appleseed and people that have been gone a long time. Oh, goodness. But well, I think you. it's well-deserved, yes. And, you <laughs> well, know, that's really probably, uh, let's just start with uh, the amazing, prolific career that you have had. Uh, you are a, a, a seasoned veteran to all forms of media uh, and mediums. I mean, you, you're a singer, you're an actor. Let's talk about how you have sustained such an amazing career, and you're still going, by the way, um, yeah. And you're an author. And there, but the thing that has been so impressive to both Paul and I is that you have continued to make your life centered around Christ and family. How have you done that in an industry that really is quite seductive? And listen, we all know what comes so often with the territory of Hollywood and the temptations that are out there. Many people lose their their minds, when it, so to speak, and their morals when it comes to the power that can come with that. What's your secret? Yeah. Well, yeah, the, the entertainment, the whole entertainment scene is a minefield, mm -hmm. a moral minefield, and it just wrecks lives. It, it grants great success to people, but even sometimes that great success is, is the reason for the downfall in their personal lives. I mean, that's just happening over and over again. But the best thing for me was I was raised in a Christian family. Mm -hmm. And I became a Christian consciously and purposely when I was barely 13. So, and it, it, it affected me. I mean, it affected my opinion of myself, my self-identity. Uh, I mean, I was an okay kid. I, was, I had not committed a lot of sins by the time I was 13. But when I walked down that aisle and confessed my faith in, in a church service in Jesus and asked to, to, for him to save me and was baptized, that, that had a, a profound effect on me personally. And from that time on, I've always thought of myself as a child of God. Mm -hmm. now, I'm a child of Archie Boone, the building contractor, and, and Margaret Pritchard Boone, the registered nurse that was my mom. Uh, but I'm also a child of God. And when my career happened, and it happened to me, I didn't seek it. Wow. I, I was singing and uh, growing up, and I became known as a guy that could carry tunes. But in Nashville, Tennessee, a, a lot of people can sing. Nothing right. unusual about that. But then when I had the opportunity to win a national television contest, and then, and then that led to a recording contract, and suddenly... I was having hit record after hit record after hit record and was married at 19 already and having yeah. children one a year for the next four years. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, I, was, I did that as a child of God. Yes. I knew that God was giving me uh, dreams that were coming true, just this had been just idle fancies. Mm -hmm. I was being given privileges and opportunities, and I had the sense right from the very beginning that this was God doing something and he had a purpose in it. Mm. So I, I, I've always, I've carried that with me all the way. And that was such a blessing because 
I didn't have to. Uh, it, it, I didn't have to talk about the fact I was a Christian. It, I, it was just known. It was part right. of my persona, yeah, and that's uh, true. So it was never a matter of controversy or mm -hmm. or anything new. It's just Pat. Pat. Pat has brown hair, brown eyes, and he's a Christian, yeah. and he can. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's it's wonderful, and it just kind of shows how your gifts made room for themselves, and God blessed you and and gave you such favor and influence to uh, be a light and salt of the earth in that way. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, the movie Elvis just c recently came out and was just uh, so well performed and uh, it was such an amazing story that really brought light to a, a younger generation that probably wasn't even familiar with Elvis. But to be honest, there was a time when you were bigger than Elvis and Elvis was coming to you and, and honored to meet you. I think we even have a picture of that. And uh, he was opening concerts for you, correct? Well, it was only one time okay. that I, Elvis opened for me, but that literally happened. And, and I, <laughs> it was in 1955, he had made one record for Sun Records. We were the same age, we were both 21. Oh. Uh, he had recorded for Sun Records one record, and it was a bluegrass song, a Bill Monroe bluegrass song, Blue Moon of Kentucky, Keep On Shining. Yes. Well, that was not rock and roll. It wasn't even rhythm and blues. Right. But that was the A side of his record. And then on the other side was a rhythm and blues song called That's All Right, Mama, That's All Right With Me. And But that was the B side of the record. When we met, it was in Cleveland, uh, at a sock hop, the nation's number one DJ, Bill Randall, had, uh, had, had created a sock hop, and he invited me to come from New Jersey, where I had just moved, because I was having hit records. I had to be in New York with my wife and our first child and expecting our second any minute. And I came to, to uh, Cleveland to the sock hop and uh, to perform that night as the headliner, and Elvis walked in in the back uh, behind the you know backstage and he was going to be on ahead of me with his one record okay. and i held out my hand hi Elvis. i'm pat boone he said nice <laughs> to meet you nice to meet you and uh, he was very shy and i said uh, bill randall thinks some th big things may be ahead for you you signed with rca victor yeah i hope so and then he just leaned back against the wall and his two buddies bill black and uh, i've let the other guy's name slip for the moment but they, they gathered around him and he was, I can tell, he didn't want to talk anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's because later, he told me later, when I asked him about that night, he said, well, I didn't know how to talk to you, man. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you were a star. I said, a star? I'd oh. only been recording since March. Yeah, wow. but you had three records and, and you were having, having hit records and I, I didn't know how to talk to you. Yeah. He was always, I mean, the rest of his life, he was socially shy. Yeah. On stage, he was in his element, and and he he was not shy at all right. on stage. Yeah. But in 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 company of people he didn't know, uh, he he was he was a guy that would lean back against the wall and uh, let you talk, but he was he just was uncomfortable. And that and interesting. So yeah. I saw that in him, and uh, when we got to be friends, and we both were renting homes in Bel Air, and making movies at the same time at 20th Century Fox, visiting yeah. each other yes. on sets and in homes, rented homes, he would come in on a Sunday afternoon. My kids in the pool, and uh, and they they'd see this friend of Daddy's named Elvis. He didn't know he was a big star. <laughs> they'd get out of the pool and go jump up on him. And I said, girl, stop that. You're getting him all wet. He said, leave him, leave him alone. I like it. And he did. <laughs> so even then that he wanted what I had at right. that moment. Wow. Wife, and kids, wow. and a family. And he never had that. He, he did marry, mm -hmm. didn't last. He did have a daughter, but mm -hmm. you know, eventually they were separated. Yeah. And he never had the family life that he so wanted. Right. Mm. You know, the struggles that many celebrities go through, uh, it, it, it makes me hurt for them because there's this public persona that they have to live up to. But Pat, you were able to keep the main thing the main thing in your life. And, you know, family and God, as I said earlier, have always been at the center of your universe. And uh, how is it that you made time to be able to spend 
with your, your wife and your four daughters with such an amazing career? Because I know the demands. Uh, what, how did that, what did that look like to set those kinds of priorities? Because you have such an amazing family. Yeah. Well, see, the, the fact that I had the family right from the beginning. Right. And this is one of the most amazing things about my career. I became a legitimate teen idol. Mm. You know, I was recording rock and roll. Right. Uh, two, two kisses and ain't that a shame and, and rip it up and long tall Sally and wop bop a loom up a lop bop bop tooty fruity. <laughs> and, and I was wearing white buck shoes and the kids were screaming, it. trying to get to me. Meanwhile, yeah. It was known, and sometimes my wife was with me, and it right. was known that we were having a baby a year. Mm -hmm. When I graduated from college at 23, magna cum laude from Columbia University with my career in full bloom, with uh, uh, already making movies, hit movies, having hit records, and uh, my television show, the Pat mm -hmm. Boone Chevy Show, all of this at once, and uh, and, and the cover of TV Guide and my cap and gown because I'm graduated. You open it up, and there's a picture of my wife Shirley and four little girls. Yes, and we're 23 years old at that point. Wow! And so all of this was a crazy, uh, unprecedented, and yeah. nothing like it has ever happened since. That that I was a legitimate teen idol, but the kids didn't seem to care. Mm -hmm. that I was married and having children all the time. Isn't that amazing? Uh, one after the other, they just wanted to get close and grab something from my clothing or get autographs. <laughs> and, and they were just in a panic about it. And I guess it's partly because I look like one of them. Yeah. I, I literally was just yeah. barely out of my own teens. I was in college, in school, and I was wearing the white buck shoes that they all had and wore. And I was the only guy on television, or the first one to ever wear white bucks on television. Oh, goodness. And not a premeditated thing. It's just the only decent pair of shoes I had. <laughs> and, right. And they go, and they say, look, that's one of us. That's one of us. <laughs> they they <Yes>. identified. <laughs> well, you yeah, know, it, uh, we we were so, Paul and I were just so sa sorry when, uh, when Shirley passed, and we got to spend a little time with you shortly thereafter. And, just such a sweet family that you have. And uh, yeah. I would imagine that she was a lot of your strength and the core of your family that helped hold it and bind it together. W would you say so? You have nailed it, of course. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. See the fact, we lived in the same house. Mm -hmm. We had breakfast together. We had breakfast right. with Jesus in the mornings, as I've said many times. Mm -hmm. uh, my four little girls, I would take them to school if I was home, although I surely would take them to school, but we always had a morning devotional when we had breakfast. It was the way I was raised, and so I was raising my kids the same way. And we would have a Bible story, and then we would sing a song like we sang at church, and we'd have a word of prayer, and then off we'd go to school. Yeah. And that was the way their day started. That's the way my day started. Mm. And then I was back to being Pat Boone, uh, either movie yeah. star, recording artist, or... Mm. But they kept, they kept you grounded. They kept you grounded in your your faith Surely, and in yeah. in reality. Yeah, you Surely know, I part of it. yeah, I love that, and and I love that that it, it's a picture of the importance of priority, and and making God the center of the home and of the family. We're going to come back in just a minute, Pat, and we're going to talk some more about what you're doing now, and I want you to talk with us some more about this amazing faith that has carried you all of these years. Friends, don't go away. We've, we've got a lot to talk about. We'll see you all in a right. few minutes. Paul and Brenda Crouch here. Baby, we have great plans coming yeah, we up. We do. We're here in Anaheim at our beautiful studio that God has provided, but what do we have coming up? We've got amazing content coming up that we're actually very excited about. We just finished season four, and we have plans to do some broadcasting from around the world, mm -hmm. uh, different locations, and God's opening doors for us. Amen. But they say you have not because you ask not. Mm -hmm. And in four years, we have never asked for a donation or any yeah. kind of support, and now we are. 
It's our heart to see that media is done right and that we give God glory for everything. And we just are following the call and we're doing it honest. And uh, we hope that you will catch the vision and ride this wave with us and know that it, God is going to continue to pour more and more out as we follow in obedience to him. Amen. Go to Brenda's website. There's all kinds of resources there for giving. God bless you. BrendaCrouch.com. Welcome back. I'm talking with my friend, Pat Boone. And Pat, I want you to tell us about your latest book. I know it's, uh, it's a very important topic. You mean this book? This book. <laughs> I just happen to have it you here. Just... I'm, I'm amazing coincidence to bring it. it up like this. It's called If. Yeah. And God told me to do this. I, when I say told me, led me to do it. I felt strongly impelled right. to write this book. And with this title, because I was learning through, I, I read through the Bible word for word every year. This is my 42nd year mm. to read it word for word and learn more from it all the time. And I notice how many times the, oh. the, the, the word if is in the Bible. In fact, more than any other word, wow. I think it's the most important word in the Bible, mm. starting in Genesis, because not there's not one promise of God in the Bible that mm. doesn't come with an if. God Good. gives freely. God gives lovingly. God gives to all if you will receive it. Mm. And, and that if is so important because we choose the life we'll live. We choose the blessings of God that we will accept. We choose our eternal destiny. Amen. And he, he offers it everything mm. that God has to offer if we will accept it. In Genesis, he only gave one directive. Don't eat of that fruit of that tree over there in the garden, mm -hmm. the tree of the knowledge of mm -hmm. good and evil. You don't need to know about evil because there is no evil mm. and, uh, and all you know is good. But mm. I'll, talk, I'll talk to you about that later. Just don't eat that fruit. If you do, you'll right. die. If you they do. Did. If you do, they did it, they died. There wow. was no ifs, ands, or buts. It <clears throat> happened. Then he has every other promise of God. Is, yeah. it, if you obey me, you live. If you disobey me, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but you will not go to heaven. You will, you will die. And yeah. not only that, you won't even have the kind of life you want to live mm. that I can give you if you will receive it. And mm -hmm. so the if is the most important word because, as I say here, the eternal choice we all must make. And I've, up here, I want you to know it's not religious. This is not some religious thing. It's just life or death. <laughs> There, is, there you go. <laughs> Life Man. and death, and this is going to be in, in truck stops and airports and it. bookstores everywhere. And, and I want people to say, if what? I, well, I'm glad it's not religious because I don't want a religious book. Well, what, right. what is it? If what? Well, they open up and they see it's very easy to read. It's, it's mm -hmm. not a very long book. And it's pictures and a, a little autobiographical because I asked the question in the beginning, who am I? to right. write a book like this. Hmm. And so I, I have to give some pictures of, of my early career and some of the things that I've done tell people. My two command performances with the Queen of England, my first oh. when Elvis opened for me, every president of the United States that I've known uh, personally, and all the other things, owned a hmm. professional basketball team and TV stations and uh, all these things that, have, and I've recorded more songs mm -hmm. than any artist in history, more than Frank Sinatra Amazing. or Bing Crosby, 2,300 separate songs that I've, and I'm still at it. I've done three in the last year. Yes. Tell us still, about your new song. Uh, is it Yeshua? Is, is that? Oshua. Oshua. It's, which is, it, Yeshua comes from Yehoshua, okay. which is Jehovah Saves. And that is the name that the, the oldest rabbi, 105-year-old rabbi, Yitzhak Kaduri, revealed uh, a couple of years back, about four years ago now, when he was 105 years old, he said, the Messiah has appeared to me. The Messiah has appeared to me and told me his name. I know the name of the Messiah. And I've written it down on this piece of paper. I sealed it. I don't want you to open it till a year after my passing. Then you'll know the name of the Messiah. Well, that has happened. It has been opened. I was with Prime Minister Netanyahu shortly after that, not long ago, 
who's a personal friend of mine, and we're just he and I meeting in, in Jerusalem. Wow. And I said, did you know Itzhak, uh, Itzhak Kaduri, the old rabbi? Of course, he was my strongest supporter. Are you familiar with the controversy since his passing? And, uh, and, he, and he didn't seem to be. I said, well, he revealed the name of your Messiah. And I hear Netanyahu say, which is? Oh. And I said, Yehoshua. And I heard him say, Jesus. Whoa. Because he knows Yeshua is Hebrew for right. salvation. Oh. Yeshua is Jehovah saves. Mm. And when the angel told Mary she was going to have a baby born by the Holy Spirit, his name will be, she didn't say Jesus, that's English. Right. She's Yehoshua, Jehovah saves, mm. for he will save his people mm. from their sins. That's what Jesus' name, mm. Yeshua, means, salvation. Well, I write about that in this book, which I've never heard ministers talk about even. Yeah. The, of course, he was, his name was salvation because he was going to be the savior. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and now that the oldest rabbi in Israel has proclaimed, and by the way, I forgot to bring a copy of, of my book, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah, to give it to Netanyahu. But uh, he, the publisher told me that the next day after I met with Prime Minister, my buddy, he ordered 30 copies of the book. Oh, so wow. now the Prime Minister, he's now Prime Minister again. And then all of, and he, he has Bible study sometimes with mm -hmm. his own friends, rabbinical people, and and he is himself devoutly religious. Yes, uh, what an honored and, life that God has given you to be able to uh, step into and speak into the lives of such influential people and dignitaries across the world. Uh, just an amazing call that God has given to you, and you also are still making movies. Uh, yep. So clearly, uh, you, what, what's the last one? Is it Mulligan? The Mulligan, that's a do-over. It's a gospel theme. Okay. But, but it's, a, it's a golf story, but with a gospel theme, because a, the Mulligan is a do-over, a second chance. If you right. mess up your first shot, you ask your partners, can I do that again? Can yes. I have a Mulligan? And uh, it was named after a guy named Mulligan uh, a long, long time ago. But, uh, but it has a, a, a gospel message, that movie. But the word is out amongst casting directors in Hollywood now, because I've done three other movies that are on Amazon. One of them I financed myself called The Miracle in the Valley. And the word is out if you have a part for an 80-year-old who can still remember his lines. <laughs> uh, call oh, Pat you look Boone. amazing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And so I, I have, uh, I've been busy in the movie part of things. Uh, I was in God's Not Dead 2, mm -hmm. playing the, uh, the grandfather to Melissa Hart, uh, who was on trial in a court for saying yes to her high school class. Yes, Martin Luther King mm -hmm. quoted the Bible, and it was in Martin Luther King High School, so it was a, lo it was a logical question. Yeah. But the, uh, her atheist parents took her to court and tried to get her fired. So that's what oh, God's not dead who is about, and I play her granddaddy yeah. in that. Film. I love it. But, Anything new on the horizon? Yes, uh, the the song Yehoshua. Uh -huh. I had to write the song about the 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 discovery that that is the Hebrew name of Jesus. Right. And I, and and it's that word Yehoshua that Christians and Jews can sing together. Mm. And, the truth not only of his name mm -hmm. but of what it says he is the savior the messiah yeah and that's what the song proclaims in and i've recorded it with michael mm -hmm. and marty and the great producer arranger mm -hmm. and I'm about to do a new recording with the uh, Sousa pacific orchestra and chorus and perhaps nice with uh with the choir in nashville the uh, christ church choir in nashville oh, nice and uh, so I'm, I'm going to be recording it more than once. Yeah. I want this song to be out there and be known. Oh. But also I recorded a song called Grits uh, that came to me in a dream recently. I dreamed I had a big country hit, and I came out of the dream being able to remember part of it. Grits, grits, bestest food there is. Country <laughs> caviar, Tennessee foie gras. Grits, grits, bestest food there is. Keep your caviar. Give me my grits. I love that. <laughs> that with, with the Ray Stevens and uh, and the Gatlin brothers and yeah. a bunch of country artists, we've recorded that song, 
and I'm recording other songs as well. So I'm still singing, Good. still writing. Yeah, you still, still have a beautiful voice. I just uh, am, am so impressed with the longevity of your career and uh, your spirit, your dynamic. Um, you know, you've, you've experienced a lot of heartbreaks in your life as well. And, you know, we, we have a couple minutes left, Pat, but I'd love for you to just answer me one question here. With all that you have done and all that you've experienced, are there any regrets? Is there anything you would have done differently? And what advice would you give to young actors, singers who, um, who also want to follow Christ in their career? Well, that's a really good question because uh, the answer I've often given to that question is I, I have almost no regrets because even the mistakes that I made and the things that I turned down, mm -hmm. I turned yeah. down movies that I would now accept mm -hmm. because of my religious conviction, but that opened the door for even bigger movies that I made as a result. But I think the biggest regret I have uh, are the times when I could have been more outspoken with yeah. individual people about why I'm happy, why I'm healthy, why I'm successful, why mm -hmm. I look forward to my death, which is not death, it's just a, a new beginning. It's a life that will continue into right. eternity. Amen. I, I've written books, I've written songs, but in my personal discussions, even with some of my own family, with whom I have not always had total agreement in this woke culture, yeah. that 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 when they disagree with me, uh, I, I back off. I, I can't be as as upfront mm -hmm. as, I, as I maybe should have been. There was a time when Shirley and I were on a flight and uh, we got off the plane and a guy in a wheelchair, uh, we learned that his name was Lazarus. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> and, and we both felt the impulse to go pray with him to see if maybe God would heal him from whatever had him in that wheelchair. But we didn't know the man, and so we held back. I mean, there are times, Billy Graham once mm -hmm. told us, on, said on TV that when uh, J uh, Johnny Carson asked him about a uh, healing evangelist, he said, look, my calling is to be an evangelist, to lead people to the Lord, but not right. for healing. Yeah. But I was asked in a, in a place in India on a stage, a mother held her little baby up to me and wanted me to pray for her baby. but. But that's not my calling. And we, Shirley and I were saying, but Billy, if you had honored that, yeah. you had healing, you wanted to, who knows? It, he might well, have been healed right then, but yeah. it would have changed your ministry dramatically. Yeah. Well, I, so we, I believe we, that, that you've done well walking in the lane that God gave you. And uh, that's a good word to us to be bold in our faith back. and don't not, and not to hold back. and. Listen, uh, Paul and I treasure you as a friend, and we're so proud of you. And thank you for being a light. You truly are salt of the earth. And we extend our love to your family, and thank you for being with me today. Well, you're great examples in the kingdom of God, too. Thank, thank you. you for letting me even be exposed this way to your audience. So thank you. we'll do it again, maybe, sometime. Absolutely. I'll singing and doing something we can talk about. Absolutely. I'll welcome you back. Thanks, my friend. And Thanks. to you, friends, I want to thank you for being with us today. I know that you were blessed. Join us again next time. I'm Brenda Crouch.